Hi there. I'm Loretta Hayes from Hayes Sewing Machine Company in Wilmington, Delaware. And today's video is actually a compilation video of the top 10 questions we get when people are having issues with their sewing machine. So we're going to show you what the question is and then we're going to show you what the solution is. So question number one, I'm sewing along and it's always at midnight when I'm not available to ask the question, okay, and I'm breaking thread. What should I do with my machine? And the number one easiest answer to that is to simply change your needle. If you're breaking thread, it could be because you're using a specialty thread, but it could be just that the needle is old. Uh, it could be that the needle has a bend in it. It could have a little chip in it. And so we're going to use our um, little uh, visual aid here today. So here's our needle. And our needle has a groove that runs down the front of it. So the thread goes into the, that groove and then gets threaded through the eye of the needle, which is what we usually are, are paying attention to. So what happens when a needle is bent is this. The thread, we'll get this thread sorted here in a second here. Sorry about that. Okay. So the thread comes down, so our needle goes through and goes through to the underside of our fabric. At which point our needle now moves up and you'll see if I can get my hand out of the way with my visual aid here. Can you see that Pam? Yep, the loop. The loop on the back. Yep. Um, that is where your bobbin thread goes through and then the needle will escape out of the hole and then move on to the next needle, uh, to the next stitch. So what happens when a needle is bent or dull is that it gets hooked up on the fabric as it's going through. And oftentimes what will happen is it will pinch that thread inside the needle groove. And so because of that, it will break the thread. So if you're working with regular thread, you're doing cotton fabric, you know, you're piecing blocks for a quilt or something like that. The very first thing that I would do is just put in a fresh needle to make sure that all of the variables are, are accurate. Um, oftentimes people will put like a needle down on the table to see if it's bent. I, I've never had any good success with that. Just go ahead, they're cheap enough, change out the needle. The most common needle that I use while I'm sewing, particularly if I'm doing uh, blocks and sewing blocks together for quilts, is just a universal needle, a size 80-12. That's going to be perfect for your kind of cotton weight fabrics. Uh, does a really nice job for most things. So that's the first thing for breaking the thread. But sometimes we're not doing just basic things. Sometimes we're doing specialty threads. So you might have an embroidery machine and the embroidery machine may be using an embroidery thread, which are stunning. Uh, you're going to get beautiful, beautiful, shiny threads, and they fill in so much better than a regular thread is going to fill in. But the downside for working with an embroidery thread is the embroidery threads are not twisted as tightly, and so they are not as strong as your regular thread is. So when this thread goes through the slot and through the eye of the needle, it rubs and occasionally what will happen is it rubs enough that it will break the thread. So the solution to that is also to change your needle, except you want to change to a needle appropriate to the fabric, the thread that you're using. So for embroidery threads, which are typically 40 weight threads, they can be polyester or they can be rayon. They make embroidery needles. It uh, has the yellow background, so when you're looking at the store in the store, you can color code them there. And they come in two sizes. They come in a 7511, and are you telling me up or down, Pam? Up. up. <laughs> so we have a 7511, and we have a 9014. 
So if I'm doing kind of standard cotton fabrics that I'm embroidering on, then I'm going to do the 7511. But if I'm doing, say, something like a towel, or I'm going to embroider on denim, or a canvas bag, then I'm going to do the 9014. What's super cool about embroidery needles is they are super polished, and the eye is one and a half times as large as a regular eye. So they're giving you more room for that thread to ease through. The other threads that we get questions on are the sulky blendable threads. They come in a size 30 and a size 12, which threads make no sense because the smaller the number, the bigger the thread gets. So a 12 is as large as you can put through the eye of the needle. Nothing else is going to go in there. But what you'll see is at the end of those spools, you will see that it recommends a 90 or 100 top stitching needle. So the top stitching needle's got a green backing to it. And if you look closely at the top stitching needle, the eye is like three times the size of a regular eye. So that thick thread has way more room but a top stitching needle goes one step further and it takes the groove that runs down the front of the needle and it makes that bigger. So that, that thicker thread can sit in that groove and when it passes through the fabric, it doesn't pinch and doesn't break the, the thread. So your thread breakage could be, I just need a new needle, it, particularly if I'm just using regular thread. But it could be that you're using specialty thread and simply by changing the needle to a specialty needle, it will make sewing fun. And that's what we want, guys. We want the sewing to be fun. So that is the answer to question number one. What do we do if I'm th breaking my thread? Question number two is I'm sewing along. I've started sewing with my machine, and I have gigantic loops underneath my fabric. And it could be that you had just sewed the, you know, you had just sewn another seam, you ran out of thread, so you had to go ahead and change out your thread. And so you rethreaded your machine and you start sewing and this is what happens. So we go along. And you kind of get a hint that something's wrong because it's not like feeding real well and it's kind of clunky and whatnot. And so you think, oh, I better check that. And so you open it up and this is what you get. Ooh, boo so hiss. boo hiss, we don't want that, okay? So when that happens, typically what the problem is, is that we need to re-thread the top tension. The thread is not in that. But here's the problem. It's kind of counter to logic because the loops are on, on the underneath side of our fabric, right? So this is how it came out of the sewing machine. So we look at the loops on the bottom side and we go, oh, I need to, I need to check my bobbin. I need to play with my bobbin. And in reality, what's happening is the loops are coming from the top. So all this thread is coming from the thread up at the top of the machine. So what, why, why does that happen? And why does it happen randomly? Like it can happen, you know, two times in a row and then, you know, you could sew for six weeks and then it'll happen again. And you're like, what? It's, what's different? Okay. And the answer is usually that when we threaded our machine, our presser foot was in the down position. So most modern machines, uh, the thread tension lives right here at the top, at the front of the machine. And so when we're threading, we pull it into the little slot and we go down the front of the machine and thread the take-up lever, etc. So there's two discs inside that slot. And when your presser foot is down, the discs are closed. And so what happens is the thread goes on top of the discs, but never get in between the discs. So literally... If we take, raise our presser foot, take our thread and come back and re-thread. So I'm going into the slot, 
I'm going to go down through the tension and you'll notice if you're um, aware of it is that your thread tension is actually loose. The discs are loose in there. And so that thread will just drop in there and we can go ahead and we can re-thread the machine. If you've been having that problem a lot, a little trick is this. Thread the whole machine until you get down to that last guide and then put your presser foot down. At that point, when I tug on my thread, my thread is really tight and it's supposed to be. If I've threaded it and I pull on the thread and it's going woo and coming all out, okay, then we know we haven't gotten it in that tension disc. And so we would just go ahead and raise that foot again and go ahead and uh, rethread the machine. So a nice little test so that you don't end up with a seam where you have to seam ripper it out is to thread up to the last guide, put the foot down, give it a little tug. If you've got tightness there, you know you have it threaded correctly. And so we'll go ahead and re-thread our piece here. And we will not have any loops on the back side of our fabric. So we'll come in and we'll start stitching. And woohoo, we don't have any funky loops going on on the sample. So when you're looking at it like this, backside, that was what we were getting with our loops. Yeah, it's like you know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, amazing too. <laughs> and what's frustrating uh, with that is if you aren't aware of the fact that you should raise your, your presser foot before you thread up your machine, you're going to look at it and you're going to be like, well, the tension's on the same normal, the same uh, number as it is when I'm sewing normally and it looks good. And then the tension's on the same number when I'm getting crazy loops. So, so what's the difference? And the difference is that the thread is not in between the discs. All right. So solution to uh, number two is if I've got loops underneath my fabric, I'm simply going to stop raise my presser foot, re-thread the machine. When I get down to that last guide, I'll put my foot down, tug on my thread, make sure it's nice and tight, and then go ahead and thread my needle, and off I go. And you're a sewing machine mechanic. You've just fixed your own problem. Awesome. All right. Third question that we get is I am breaking needles. So the first one is we were breaking threads. Now we're breaking needles. And usually, if you are breaking needles, it's because your needle is too small for the fabric that you're working with. So if you have a hem where you're going to do jeans, so if we have jeans, we've got like three layers in that uh, flat felt seam that we have there. So if we flip that up, now we have six layers got two layers over here on the side and we flip it again and we've got nine layers and we've got three layers. So we're going from three layers to nine layers to three layers. And your machine goes, mm-mm, I'm not doing it. Okay, and there's two solutions that you can do. The first thing is if I'm doing something as radically thick as this, I'm not only going to go to a higher size needle, because remember, universal needles, the, the ones that we were talking about at the beginning with the size 80, um, they go way up. So you can go all the way up to uh, 100, uh, excuse me, 110 slash 18. So that is a really whomping big needle. You know, like I wanna see what you're sewing if you're sewing with that needle. But the other thing that you can do is you can change to, once again, a specialty needle. And so a jeans needle is going to have a much sharper point and is going to help me puncture through this really dense fabric. So quite often when I'm doing jeans, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do, uh, I, I could do an 18, you know, a, one, a 110 slash 18. Um, my most common one I find for myself when I'm hemming jeans is uh, I do the 100 slash 16. That seems to be the one that I work with the most. So we can go ahead and we can pop our new needle in. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to come in and we're going to pop in our needle. 
flat side to the back, assuming you have a modern machine. And then we're going to go ahead and tighten that needle in. So now we've got this whomping big needle. And we're going to be ready to sew this heavy denim. Now, Bernina's come with a little white device. They call it a height compensation plate. Very, very technical. Okay, this is what it looks like. Let me pop it on blue so you can see. Uh, and you can see that you've got three different levels of it. So the height compensation plate, if you don't own a Bernina and you do really heavy things, you can just buy them as a separate device. Um, I didn't think to pull one, but you know, you're less than $5, so, so not a very expensive tool. So part of the reason that you can break needles is when you're going from those three layers of fabric to the nine layers of fabric and back down to the three layers, your presser foot, instead of humming along perfectly straight, is coming at an angle. And so sometimes we're breaking needles, not because we don't have the right size or type of needle in, but because our foot is so angled that the needle is actually hitting the back of the foot, and that's what's breaking the needle, not the thickness of the fabric. So when we go to take and do this, this is where the height compensation plate comes in. So I would start out, if I'm having a pair of jeans, the very first thing that I would do is I would come in and I would lengthen up my stitch length. So normal is 2.5. I would definitely be up at three, at least maybe even 3.5. And if you think about it, commercially hem jeans, they have a really long stitch length as well. And there's a reason for it because it's going to make it easier to go through this thicker piece. So here we go. We're going to start stitching on the three layers. And so my big heavy denim needle is doing its job and we're going along and now we're coming to the bump, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to stitch as close to the bump as you can get. Sometimes it's a case of me picking up the foot, tucking it underneath a little bit, and stitching and getting to about here. But if you take a look at it, and can you come to the side? Can you see if we can? So if you take a look, my presser foot in the front is way up there. Okay, can you see that? Mm -hmm. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the height compensation plate, I'm going to pick up my presser foot so my needle stand to hold my position and I'm going to take as many of the plates as I need to level up the foot. So in the case of this one, this is a two plate bump. So now my foot is straight across and not tipped up at the front. So now we can come in and we can start stitching across that gigantic bump. Now, sometimes you'll find that you need to get help coming off. So with denim, it'll probably just roll on off. But think of this as I'm stitching on really heavy uh, handles, maybe like webbing handles. And so it's kind of a, I come to the end of the webbing and I drop right off. So I don't want to have that really long stitch and then normal looking stitches. So I can take my height compensation plate and I'm going to do one plate, just kind of tuck it on the side. I am not stitching through my plate, so my plate is definitely to the right by quite a bit, by about a quarter of an inch. And I'm just going to use it to let me help get off this bump. And when I'm off the bump, I'll stop, raise my foot, get rid of the height compensation plate, and then I will just go all the way along and I would finish things up. So now we have this great looking hem and we went through that monstrous thickness going along like that. Now, height compensation plate, once again, if you don't own a Bernina, that's fine. You can buy a height, uh, height compensating plate. However, if you have a baby lock, okay, and Pam, I'm gonna have you come over to the baby lock. Often, we get questions 
about Loretta, what is this black button? Okay, that black button on the, the mm -hmm. outside of your regular foot, which is your J foot. And so you're like, huh, what is that? All right, so it's a built-in height compensation plate. So once again, we're gonna be on a long stitch length. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna lengthen up my stitch length. I'm gonna go all the way up to about three and a half. We're gonna fold up our hem. And we're gonna start stitching and we're gonna stitch as close as we can to that hem. So we'll come up about there and we'll stop. Yep. Right? Now, once again, you take a look at the side of that foot and man, are we crooked. So we're gonna pick up the foot. We're gonna push the foot up until it will go all the way up and I can press that black button in. So now I can come across that hem. And remember, I haven't changed my denim needle here, so we're really risking it here. <laughs> so we got that there. And then we can come along and we can stitch down on our other side. So that little black button that everybody's like, I don't know what that's for, okay? It's gonna be perfect for helping you go up over those heavy bumps be it a bump where you are doing um, jeans or like stitching over a belt loop or doing handles on a bag. So breaking your needles could be not so much the, the fact that you don't have a new needle in, it could be that the needle is not heavy. And that's actually one of the things that I use as my gauge. If I break a needle, particularly if I'm hemming jeans, if I break a needle, it's heavy. I could just be breaking a needle. But if I'm breaking a needle once and then I'm breaking another needle and I'm breaking another needle, that's my machine desperately asking for a heavier size needle. So that would be a case of I would jump up to that 18 denim uh, so I have that super sharp point and it'll puncture through the fabric to the best. So that is what do I do if I'm breaking needles? So the next question, question number four, is a question that we get a lot. And that is, and we get it on all brands of machines, my needle threader isn't working. What's wrong? So with a needle threader, things to be aware of with your needle threader, your needle threader is a little hook, it jumps through the eye of the needle it grabs a hold of the thread and then it pulls two layers through because it pulls a loop through and then you pull the loop through the rest of the way. So the two most common problems that we have with needle threaders is number one, that we don't have a fresh needle. So if my needle is bent slightly or dull or chipped, then that hook can't make it through the eye of the needle and so I can't thread my needle with my threader. The second thing, uh, which is far more common than having to change the needle for your needle threader, is that the needle is not in the highest position when we are trying to thread the needle. And we tend to do this, we tend to grab a hold of our flywheel and manually turn the, the needle to what we think is the highest position. But if you think about it, you got this teeny tiny eye you got this hook of metal going through. It's gonna grab two, two pieces of thread to pull the loop through. If it's not perfect, then it's gonna struggle. So here's the trick. If you have a needle threader that you're not getting your thread threaded, you're going to take, and almost all machines have got a button, or if you just step on the foot paddle, it will take it and bring it up. So if I take and do a stitch, it'll take a, the stitch and put the needle to the highest position. Uh, on Bernina's, there's a little picture of a needle with two arrows. Can you see those? Um, hold on just one second. Yep. Okay. So if we press that, the needle's going to go down, press it up, and we'll go, we'll go up. So now our machine has set up the needle threader so that the needle threader is going to be perfect. It's going to be lined up perfect. 
So then what we do is we make sure that we've got our thread in that last guide right before the needle. If it's not in the last guide, remember it's not going to lay in the groove of the needle. And so once again, the needle threader is going to have a hard time pulling it through. So on Bernina needle threaders, you're going to pull the threader down. There's a gray hook. So we're going to put the thread over here on the hook. And the reason for that, your needle thread, can you see my hand? Okay. Your thread is going down like this, right? Okay. Lower your hands. That, uh, okay, where? Right there. There good? Okay. So here's your hook for your needle threader, right? Your thread is coming down, so I'll do it this way. Okay, so the thread is coming down. If the thread is vertical, it's going to have a hard time grabbing a hold of that thread. If the thread is sideways, it can grab a hold of it every single time. So the little gray hook on the left hand side is going to allow you to put that into there and it's going to move it from a vertical position to a horizontal position. Press your threader all the way up and you're going to line it up into the little slot right above. Now, some of the modern Berninas have a little cutter and thread holder that is over here on the side. Some of the older ones, not so much. So you just hold the thread up. And then what you're going to do is you're going to release the threader and it's going to pull that thread through and you just pull the loop off of the back. Can you do that one more time? Absolutely. So we're going to come in. We're going to thread the hook while it's sticking out. We're going to push down on the button. We're going to go in. So I'll do it as if it was an old one. So I'll just gently hold it. And then when I release it, it's going to go ahead and pull the loop. And I'm just going to pull the loop all the way. Uh, also, don't uh, pull that little thread in the front because that'll just pull it right back out. Make sure you're pulling the loop from the back coming along there. Perfect. So super, super cool. So let's head over to the baby lock for a second because we get this on baby locks as well. So the needle threader on the baby lock is a little different, but the same thing applies. We need to, if we hand turn it, it's got a 50-50 shot at it. So for on a baby lock, you're going to have a little picture of a needle that has a line going through it. So we touch it, the needle goes down, we touch it again, and the needle comes back up. Got it. We make certain that we've threaded that last guide. That's critical for all needle threaders. And then we're going to come into the little notch. Number seven is like a pair of fingers that holds on to the thread. And we'll cut it over here at eight. So let's have that there. There we go. And then we Sorry, push guys. down. And my hand was in the way, wasn't it? Let's do that again. I'll put my hand in the back. All right. All right, we Go good? for it. All right, so we're in the slot. We're going to be over to number seven, and we're going to cut our thread at number eight. And then what we're going to do is we're going to push down. Put your presser foot down, and then push down on your threader. And Look it's going to thread that through, and Perfect. we just pull the loop through the rest of the way. Awesome. So both of the types of threaders are dependent on the same things. You need to have the needle in the highest position, but we don't want to put it there. We want the machine to put it there. So however you're going to let your machine, be it a button or tapping your foot paddle and putting it up, you're going to be so much more successful for the needle threader. Now, the last and fifth thing that we get as a question on, a on the phone uh, is on Berninas. And so what happens is I get the telephone call and it says, they say, hey, Loretta, I'm sewing on my machine, but it's buzzing. Uh, it seems to be sewing okay. It, it see, you know, everything's working really well, but it's just this high pitch buzz. Do I need to bring it in for service? What's the deal? And so this is what the high pitch buzz is. So on Berninas, there is a separate motor for most of the rewinds. So what happens, I'm going to turn this on and I'm going to be quiet so you can hear the buzz. So if you take and you start sewing, it's going to go, oh, okay. And it's going to let you keep running the bobbin rewind. 
you can technically, if you had to say a second spool of thread, I'm a quilter, so uh, I have like a gazillion spools of gray thread. So I could put a, a gray spool up here and I could be rewinding bobbins while I'm stitching. However, this is also really close to where you put your thread on. So sometimes what happens is we're putting our thread on and we hit that and we're like, oh my word, my machine is buzzing. You know, what should I do? Um, and we have occasionally had people bring their machine in, truck it in, um, and we say, they say, oh, it's buzzing, and we'll pop it up on the, the little check-in table and say, well, you know, does it, d is this the buzz sound? And then we put it back, and um, they feel really bad. They're <laughs> like, I trucked it all the way in. Mm. And we feel really bad that they had to. So those are all those questions that you should be calling us because we can, we can solve them before you bring them in. So I hope this uh, answers some of your questions. Um, we're going to do a similar video in a few weeks on different things for the, the most common uh, questions when you're working with your embroidery machine. So we look forward to seeing you then uh, and we'll see you next week.